Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install VirtualBox and Windows 7 32-bit uh, Professional, or, well, any version of Windows 7, I guess, but uh, particularly Windows 7, and I'll talk a little bit about why I'm choosing the 32-bit later. All right, so uh, we're here at the virtualbox.org website. It's a free program. Uh, it's a great program. And uh, when you click on Downloads here, you're going to have to choose. Uh, I'm on Mac OS X, by the way, and so uh, this is a video for those uh, who are on the uh, Mac OS X platform. And so um, I'm going to click here on the latest version, which is VirtualBox 4.1.8. And I'll go ahead and click on that. Then it's going to go ahead and download. So uh, I'm using Chrome. However, which way you decide to download it is uh, up to your personal preference. So I'm going to go ahead and click click on keep and then once that downloads we'll begin the install process. Alright so here I have the uh, VirtualBox uh, DMG. I'm going to go ahead and double click on it. Alright so uh, this window will pop up and so basically we're just going to double click on the VirtualBox package. Click on continue and continue again and we're going to choose a hard drive uh, which is our main hard drive, my only hard drive that's on this laptop. And then uh, we'll check out the uh, customized settings and uh, everything looks okay. So we'll go ahead and click on install. Then you're going to authenticate. And uh, this process should only take mm, about a couple of minutes. Looks like it's going fast on mine, but I'm on a solid state hard drive, so it installs a little bit quicker. Alright, so now the install process is finished. We're going to go ahead and click on close. Then uh, we got to open up the applications folder because that's where uh, VirtualBox is installed. So I'll just go ahead and run VirtualBox here. And uh, some info about the new latest release. If you want to check that out, you can. Alright, so here is the uh, VirtualBox manager. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new. Uh, this is a short little wizard that we're going through and uh, we're going to name our virtual machine here so I'll just call it Windows 7 I don't know 32 bit right and then uh, you can choose the operating system here and it kind of already knew figured out what you're gonna install so it filled it out for you So just go ahead and click on continue now the amount of memory the, to allocate to your virtual machine since it's a 32 bit and it's not going to access more than three or four gigs I would suggest for a Windows 7 machine to use 2 gigs, right? But don't exceed the amount of resources that you have available. So if you go to about this Mac, you'll see how much RAM that you have. Typically, um, if you're on a MacBook Pro, you probably have in between, uh, I don't know, 2 and 4 gigs. Um, if you have only 2 gigs, I suggest really updating um, some memory, adding some memory on there. If you have four gigs, great, allocate two gigs to this virtual machine. Uh, even though I have eight, um, I'm gonna only allocate two gigs still uh, for this 32-bit. If you have 64-bit uh, and you wanna install 64-bit, then allocate four gigs of RAM. Um, but if you only have four gigs of RAM, don't do that, just do uh, two gigs of RAM. Um, you don't wanna do more than half of what you, uh, the amount of memory that you have. Right, and so uh, if you have really low amount of RAM, um, Windows 32-bit is only going to take uh, the minimum of one gig of RAM. So if you only have two gigs, allocate one gig of RAM. But your your experience of Windows 7 is probably going to suck. So uh, with that said, that's how you check how much RAM to allocate. I'm going to go ahead and go to two gigs of RAM here. 2048 All right so click on continue uh, now this is um, a hard drive space that you want to allocate and we're going to create a new hard drive and uh, we'll just click on continue let's see start up disk a new machine okay yeah and uh, so it's going to create um, a basically a file a virtual disk file that's going to be stored on your hard drive, and this uh, virtual disk file is in um, has a, diff a specific format. So in our case, it's going to be a 
VDI, virtual box disk image, right? So that's a single file that contains your entire operating system and your hard drive, basically. So if you allocated 20 gigs to your virtual uh, machine, this VDI, virtual box disk image, is going to be 20 gigs large, right? Um, and then you have other uh, options here, um, a VMDK, a VHD. These are for different virtualized software so we're using VirtualBox. VirtualBox has their own um, VMDK that's another I think that's uh, what is it I want to say um, um, what's the other Fusion? Fusion? I have it here yeah VMware Fusion um, and then VHD I don't know what that one is and then HDD that's a parallels that's another program that's like VMware or like VirtualBox Right, so it'll be compatible with those other programs, which is a cool feature if you want to use those other programs as well. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it at uh, VDI VirtualBox Disk Image. Right, so dynamically allocated or fixed size. So basically, dynamically allocated means it's a small size, just enough to fit whatever it is that you install, uh, like the operating system. So the file, remember how I said it, it it's a single file. If you allocate 20 gigs, uh, when you have it dynamically allocated, that means uh, the operating system gets installed that takes up about 8 gigs. So that single file ends up only being 8 gigs, right? And as you install programs or download video or download files to the operating system, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So it'll, you know, turn into either 8 gigs or then later on after you install all your programs, it turns into uh, 15 gigs. Uh, and then, you know, 17, 16, 17, 18, 19 gigs, all that. It, it gets bigger, right, dynamically. And so a fixed size means that that single file, if you say I want this hard drive to be 20 gigs big, then it's going to make room uh, and make that file 20 gigs, right? And so as you fill up, uh, it's going to get larger and larger. <clears throat> so that's a little bit about uh, virtual disk storage. Oh, and uh, I'm going to leave it at dynamically allocated. Okay, so um, <clears throat> now here's where it's asking you, all right, so how much do you want to allocate to your um, virtual machine? And it's set, uh, the default is uh, 20 gigs. I'm going to go a little bit higher. You go to about 40 gigs. And uh, the file name is going to be called Windows 732-bit. And I'll show you the where it gets stored if you click on here. Um, you can tell it where you want to store that that single virtual file, your virtual hard drive, right? So we'll click on next, and then uh, here's some info about what you just created. You're choosing the VDI dynamically allocated, and then here is the location of your um, file, right? So it's going to be stored in users, the geek, that's your username, VirtualBox, VMs, and then Windows 732 bit. That's a folder, and then Windows 732-bit.vdi. That's the name of the of the file. It's going to take up about 31 gigs. All right. So we'll click on Create. Create again, and there we have it. All right. So a couple of things um, we'll have to set up beforehand, and you can do this after any time you want. But I like to set things up before the way I like them. Um, over on settings here, click on that. Let's see, let's go to, yeah, we can leave all of this alone. Right, here's the memory we allocated. I don't need a floppy, so I'm going to uncheck that. And then move it down. And this is the boot order. So the first boot device is going to be a CD-ROM drive, second is a hard drive. Chipset. I kind of want to do ICH9, but I will leave that alone. All right, everything is we set there. All right, so your processor. Um, I have, uh, what do I have? 2.7 gigahertz Intel Core i7. I believe that is a quad core. Let me see here. Let me go to activity monitor and check. Don't remember offhand. Yeah, so I have a quad core. So if you go to activity monitor, you can see how many cores you have. So I've got four cores. 
So for this virtual machine, I'm going to allocate two CPUs. And uh, the execution cap just means that how much of that two CPUs uh, you want to allow this virtual machine to use. Do you want to allow it to use 100% of that two cores? Sure, why not? I don't plan on doing anything um, outside of the virtual machine. When I'm in the virtual machine, I'm probably that's going to be it. That's the only thing that I'm running. <clears throat> so I'm fine with uh, letting it run at uh, at 100%. And if you want to be on the safe side, you can go to just 90. All right, so um, acceleration, yeah, you can leave that alone. All right, so on to the next one, uh, which is the display. Video memory, I'm going to allocate the maximum amount, and I'm going to enable uh, 3D acceleration and 2D because Windows 7 uh, does require quite a bit of uh, video performance. All right, and uh, remote display, I'll leave that alone. So we can pretty much leave everything alone on the uh, storage section here. And uh, we'll move on to audio. We can leave that alone too. So for a network device, I like to use uh, the bridge adapter. Basically what that does is that it takes the internet from your computer. Your computer is already getting the internet uh, or an IP address from the network uh, through either through Wi-Fi or through a, a connected cable. And so uh, what I'm telling VirtualBox is that I want you to become your own adapter right your own separate adapter don't mooch off of another uh, adapter that's built into the computer or whatnot um, become your own adapter and get an IP address as if you were your own adapter right so um, later on it, it might be be beneficial to you uh, to have this treated as its own in, uh, adapter so then uh, by doing that uh, it's giving you options here these are the uh, physical uh, ports or physical ways uh, that your computer has to connect to the internet or connect to a network right so there's uh, the airport that's wireless and then there's Ethernet so you're telling VirtualBox this bridge adapter hey get the internet from the airport and if you know you use the airport a lot then uh, leave this checked or if you use the Ethernet cable a lot then use this checked so uh, for this one I'm gonna leave at the airport in advance, you can leave alone. This is just um, what you type of uh, network card that you wanted to install, right? So I'll leave that alone. And then for uh, adapter two here, um, just to be a little redundant, so I don't have to monitor or keep track of anything, I'm going to enable that, and I'm also going to make that a bridge adapter. But I'm going to choose Ethernet. So um, my virtual machine is going to show that I have two adapters right I'm gonna have one adapter uh, it's gonna it's gonna think that it's a, um, a plug-in adapter an Ethernet cable it that's how it's gonna show up in your virtual machine um, in your operating system your Windows operating system it's gonna show that you have two physical connections um, and feeding those connections is the airport and the other one is gonna be the Ethernet cable that's built in physically into your laptop right so uh, you know it's a little bit complicated yeah I know but uh, just you can leave it like this or you can just have it as a, a NAT and um, that's an easier route right if you don't plan on doing anything network related okay um, so moving on we'll go to the ports you can enable this I don't really see why you would use any of this um, for serial ports but uh, for USB um, you can leave this alone so share folder just means there's a folder that's on let's say your desktop on the Mac OS X uh, it will also put a folder on the desktop of your Windows 7 installation and so whatever files you add to those folders it'll show up in both your operating system your Windows 7 operating system and your Windows or your Microsoft um, Mac OS X uh, operating system so once everything is configured we're ready to just go ahead and start I've already inserted my um, disk my Windows 7 32-bit disk right and so um, this is just saying when you're in the op the virtual machine if you want to get out of it and release the keyboard and mouse you press uh, left uh, command right so I'm just going to press OK. 
So now the machine is going to start up. And so if you get this uh, error here, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the little disk here. And we'll say host drive. And we're mounting the host drive now. So it's like we're plugging in the, the uh, optical disk drive. So then we'll go ahead and give this a restart. And to do that, you go to machine, then reset. So we're resetting the machine. Now you hear it, it's going to uh, start picking up the disk. Now it's loading up Windows, and we're going to go ahead and install uh, Windows 7. All right, so we're uh, here at the Windows 7 install process, and we're going to just go ahead and click on Next and Install Now. All right, and we'll click on I accept the license terms. Then we'll go to Custom, click on Drive Options, click on New, click on Apply, click on OK. And then uh, make sure that it's highlighted here on the disk zero partition two. Click on next. Now it should take about um, maybe about 30 to 40 minutes depending on the speed of your machine uh, to install Windows 7. All right, so uh, here we are at the um, choosing the name for the account. And I'm just going to go ahead and name it. So I'm not going to put a password. And I will activate later. Use recommended settings for updates, time zone is fine, and then I'll say it's a work network. All right, and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Windows 7 32-bit running in VirtualBox. Thanks for watching.